Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Today we're going to find the domain and range of a piecewise function. Now, of course, before we can do this, let's go ahead and grab our graph of a piecewise function to see what I'm talking about. So this is basically a piecewise function. You can see that it's made up of all kinds of different pieces in here. Now, if I want to find my domain and range, I want to start thinking about my inputs and my outputs of this function. Remember that the domain, that represents all of the x values or inputs that I could use. Whereas the range, that re represents all of the y values or the outputs. Alright, so let's go ahead and start finding the domain. To find the domain, I want to figure out, okay, what x values were used to build this function. In order to do that, I imagine, okay, what if I am some point on the graph? What x value did I come from? So I trace back the point and realize, oh, it looks like I came from an x point up there. So I know that x point is in the domain. And you know what? I might do this for another point on the graph and trace it back to an x value. As you can see, that I can trace back lots and lots of different points back to the x axis. In fact, as I trace these points back, I can start to shade in my x-axis, representing the places where they got traced back to. Making sure that all my trace backs are nice and vertical looks good. So all the pieces on here got traced back to negative 3 and less than negative 3. On this next piece, I can run through that same process of tracing things back to the x-axis. And you see that we can trace in even more of our x-axis. But I can only trace up to the point 4. After that, I have a little bit of a gap. The reason is, there's no graph at which I can trace places back to the x-axis. There's nothing there. So, so far I've shaded in all of the x-axis, all the way up to 4. Now, after this gap, I can start playing the same game again. Start just tracing things back, shading things in. Now, you may have noticed that at the end of this piece, there's a circle. What that circle means is that there is no value on the end. Well, if there's no value on the end, I'm not going to be able to shade in the 6, so I'm going to use an open circle right there at the 6. Alright, so we've traced back lots of our points, and I can see that all of the x-axis is shaded except for a hole right here between 4 and 6. So I would say that my domain starts at negative infinity and goes all the way up to 4. Now it includes the 4, so I'm going to use a bracket, and of course I have a gap. My interval picks up again at 6 and goes to infinity. Now to connect these two intervals, I'm going to use this little u symbol known as the union, and it stands for or. So my x values could be in this interval or in this interval. And again, notice I'm using the bracket here because I include the 4, and a parentheses because I do not include the 6. All right. So that gives us the domain of the piecewise function. Let's see how we can find the range. So here I have the same graph, and here's that domain we found before. But to find the range, I want to find our y values. So imagine going through that tracing process, but rather than tracing things back to the x-axis, trace them back to the y-axis. So, you know, imagine you're a point sitting there on the graph. You would get traced back all the way to the y-axis, and you're a point over there. Trace back another point. Where would you end up? And you could keep doing this for lots and lots of different points on the graph. Now as you trace back these points, you can start to shade in the y-axis. Looks pretty good. Now, you get pretty far, but again, you get to this open circle, and remember, that means there, there is no value there. So I have to put a big open circle at my 6 to show that I was not able to trace back to 6. All right, there's no graph in here, so I got a gap. And, oh, looks like we start back up again at 3, and I can start tracing things once again. Now, when I get into here, I could trace back from either point. That's okay. Either way, from 3 on, starts to get shaded in. 
as of course these points can trace back. But eventually, you know, I run into a bit of a stopping point again. Between negative 2 and 5, there's no graph for me to trace back. So, you know, that has to stay blank. All right, looks like I actually have something at negative 5. And even though there's no value right here, there is values along the rest of the line. So one of those guys could trace back, and there's a single point right there at 5. And, of course, no graph after that. Well, it looks like we have a bunch of different pieces in the range. Let's go ahead and list them all out. Now, we start with the smaller ones first and work our way up. So the first thing I have is a single point at 5. For a single point, we can use a curly bracket. All right, looks pretty good. And then I have another interval between negative 2 and 3. Now it includes both of those points, so I use my bracket. Between negative 2 up to 3. It looks like I have one more interval that goes from 6 off to infinity. Now this 6 is not included, so I will use a parentheses on that one. So this has three spots. We can connect them all using our little union symbol. And now we have the range. So as you can see, finding the domain and range of a piecewise function basically amounts to tracing it back to the inputs and the outputs that were used. Alright, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.